It happened again, didn't it? You finally got out of a toxic relationship, took a short hiatus, got back into the dating scene, and now it's the same person with a different face. Now you're either stuck in another dead-end relationship or swearing off of relationships for good. How can you ever learn to trust other people when you keep having these experiences? Well, that's what we're going to cover in today's video. There was a time in my own journey where I'd leave one relationship and go right into another one only to find that I was with the same person with a different face. It always went something like this. The short-lived honeymoon period, the slow fall off of the pedestal, and then years of dysfunction and unhappiness. I was in a total of three toxic relationships before I finally decided to do something about it. After my last toxic relationship, I had recently left and was living in my own place when I lost my dad unexpectedly. It was then that I finally realized that life is too short and I began to rethink my life choices. I was so tired of repeatedly starting over and finding myself in the company of partners who always ended up being toxic manipulators and abusers. I decided that I would stop accepting toxic relationships, even if that meant I had to be single for the rest of my life. As it turned out, I didn't have to be single for the rest of my life, and I'm now in a beautiful, healthy relationship with a man who is my true life partner. Here are the basic steps I took to go from anxious and insecure to secure and fulfilled. Number one, I took a long time off of dating to work on myself. While there are several steps involved in becoming secure, the first one is to lay off of dating and work on the things that make us insecure in the first place. For me, that meant to stop looking outside of myself for approval and work on accepting myself first and foremost. I went through a fairly long period of self-forgiveness because I didn't want unconscious fears and wounds to sabotage any future relationships I might enter into. I didn't want feelings of unworthiness to cause me to stay in relationships with people who tried to prove I was unworthy. We can't do this if we leave one relationship and nosedive into another one. Therefore, instead of getting on dating apps and websites, I started the inner work. I did all the things outlined in my Break Free program, and I also worked with spiritual healers and shamans. I meditated instead of scrolling through social media. I wrote in my journal instead of watching reality TV. I made a promise to myself that I would find a way to approve of myself instead of waiting for others to approve of me because I didn't need anyone else's approval. I needed my own. And I wasn't going to find that while swimming in a sea of strangers. Number two, I stopped breaking my own deal breakers. No more trying to win someone's love or approval and ignoring my internal GPS to do that. No more being the cool girl who pretended to be okay with a partner who constantly talked about how attractive other women were or who watched porn <clears throat> behind my back. No more putting up with verbal abuse or trying to make things work with someone who was determined for things not to work. No more letting someone talk to my children in disrespectful ways. No more falling for the broken promises and lies that things were going to be different. No, I stopped breaking my own deal breakers by allowing someone else to break them. We teach people how to treat us. And I had taught my past partners that my deal breakers could be broken. If I didn't uphold my own deal breakers, why should they? But I'm not doing that anymore. I made a vow to myself that my deal breakers would be just that, deal breakers, not something to be ignored or compromised. Number three, I stopped showing up as my wounded inner child. While there are different things that cause us to tolerate dysfunction in relationships, it's been my experience that we often show up in relationships as our wounded inner child. A wounded inner child may fear abandonment or rejection, leading us to be clingy or excessively dependent on our partner. This fear can also manifest as jealousy or possessiveness in some relationships. But for me, it showed up as waiting for affection that never came. 
It showed up as waiting for my accomplishments to be praised. It showed up as waiting to be told I'm a good girl when I did something nice or thoughtful, or when I was being flexible after a fight or argument, which really meant that I pretended it didn't happen. Relationships aren't where we work out our wounded inner child issues. These need to be taken care of from within and be largely dealt with before entering a relationship. At the very least, we need to have an awareness when we're showing up as our wounded inner child so that we can take care of it instead of waiting to be rescued by someone else. This doesn't mean that we trauma dump on friends, family, or social media pages. No judgment, I did all that too. But it doesn't mean we eternally vent in support forums without ever making any real changes. It doesn't mean signing up for all the online freebies and then letting them collect digital dust while we engage in more numbing and denial. Inner child wounding does not go away on its own. It goes away with focused action. Number four, I stopped engaging in limerence when I met someone new. After a while, I felt I was ready to experiment with dating again. I signed up for a few popular dating sites and apps. Only this time, I vowed to show up intelligently and with discernment. This meant no more imprinting onto the first person who seemed interested or interesting. It meant waiting for someone who was a kindred spirit instead of lowering my standards to make a connection. No more going on one date and imagining our first vacation together or what our shared home would look like. Those things are just silly and they have no place in today's dating world. Therefore, I no longer changed the way I dressed, my hair. I didn't change my habits. I decided I would no longer change a thing about myself because I wanted to be myself in a relationship, not do the eternal pick me dance. I approached dating as someone who was doing silent interviews. I looked for consistency with words and actions. I watched out for ghosting behaviors. I stayed alert for sketchiness and self-absorbed tendencies. I didn't show up as a feminazi, but I also didn't show up as someone who needed anyone else's approval either. I kept things fun and light, and I allowed people to show me who they were, and I believed them from the start. If it didn't feel right, I was willing to walk away and mean it. Number five, I stopped making strangers more important than myself. This ties in with all the previous steps, but it still deserves its own recognition. When we meet someone, we usually don't get a true picture of who they are. They might be fun and charming, and there might be lots of chemistry, but these things aren't what will hold a relationship together. So I had to be willing to see the big picture, to see into my future and decide if someone was worth a second or a third date. If they were rude to the wait staff, then I wouldn't be seeing them again. Same went for if they bashed an ex or if they talked excessively about themselves to the point that I couldn't get a word in edgewise. Quite honestly, most people were blocked and deleted before even meeting them in person. When you know what you want in a relationship, you can get a feel for people by their dating profile. I didn't go all gaga just because someone sent a virtual flirt or told me I looked pretty. I stayed away from anyone who had the nerve to talk about sex when I didn't even know them. If they took liberties, I took an exit. Trust has to be earned these days. And this won't happen by making strangers more important than ourselves. For me, this meant that I said a lot of goodbyes before I found my partner. And he became my partner because he earned my trust. Number six, I embodied the Phoenix process but the burning came first. This is the part that a lot of people aren't willing to endure. To truly make transformation, it takes dying to our old selves, dying to old programming, dying to old habits, dying to false beliefs about ourselves, life, and relationships. As the writer Kaylin Dion says, you will rise from the ashes, but the burning comes first. And for this part, you must be brave. This is the pivotal part. 
It's like being reborn. Maybe the same but different. Wounded but healed and strong. This is the open portal from being insecure and anxious to secure and fulfilled. I stopped allowing or engaging in self-abandonment and I looked back to see that I had abandoned myself over and over in relationships, romantic and otherwise. I had to acknowledge the moments when things went from the honeymoon phase to the slow fall off the pedestal and pinpoint those moments when I should have walked away instead of staying and trying to make things work. Because making it work often means self-abandonment on some level. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't compromise or work towards harmony. What I'm saying is we need to stop sacrificing ourselves for someone else. We need to stop martyring ourselves on the funeral pyre of dead love. Why would we do that? Why would we make someone else more important than ourselves when we've known them for less time than a series on Netflix? It's preposterous if you think about it. It's not logical to put our lives on hold, waiting by our phone and being blind to life while we're waiting for someone's text or phone call. It's not healthy to imprint onto someone we dated once or twice and expect the yellow brick road or immediate exclusivity. It's not healthy to remain in toxic relationships where we feel unloved and then trauma dump everywhere instead of making changes to end the things that we're trauma dumping about. This is not mature dating. It's not mature expectations. This is wounded dating and wounded expectations. And it's only when we let go of all the wounded patterns will we have a chance of finding healthy relationships and healthy love. When we're in a safe relationship, we're not white knuckling our way through every hour because we feel abandoned or rejected. When we're in a safe relationship, we're not brushing life aside and leaving a grand canyon of open space for a person who leaves it empty. When we're in a safe relationship, we're not breaking our own deal breakers and then trauma dumping on everyone around us and on social media because the other person won't change. When we're in a safe relationship, We're not worrying about those extra five or 10 pounds. We're not worried that our partner's watching porn behind our backs. We're not putting up with lies or silent treatments. We're not putting up with a nightmare and calling it a relationship. We're not running around like a starved cat in a cat food commercial over random crumbs and calling it a feast. We're not throwing our lives out the window because the person was nice on a third Tuesday a couple of months ago and refrained from verbal abuse. That's not a relationship. That is purgatory. You can rise from the ashes, but the burning comes first. And for that part, you must be brave. That's all for today, dear friend. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with anyone who you feel needs this information. And if you really liked it, make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on my videos. And as always, make sure to visit the description box below this video for helpful resources and tools and to send me any requests that you might have for future videos. Until next time.